Hi and welcome to Law Seekho. My name is Amish Agarwal and today I want to talk about going the extra length for your client and what will happen if you do not. Over the years I've seen several situations when I have fought battles in appellate courts when the trial court attorney was somebody else. Little things that the person could have done if they were just a little diligent which they did not do lost my client the entire case despite my best efforts just because of those little few things that could have been done a little better as a law student as a final year law student i had the opportunity to draft a civil uh, special leave petition in the supreme court against an order of conviction upheld by all courts below in a prevention of corruption matter when i did a little bit of research i saw that all judgments uh, uh, on the aspect of prevention of corruption mandate two essential ingredients one of which is the establishment of a demand for the illegal gratification now in my particular case what had happened was the, the allegation was that a junior engineer of some particular department in some village in haryana went and asked the mother of the complainant for a little bribe the complainant's mother then told the complainant that this of particular junior engineer came and asked for a particular bribe to set up the some electricity or something like that and then the whole trap was set up the person was apprehended the matter went to trial now what is interesting is that the complainant deposed that his mother told him that there was a demand of illegal gratification the mother was not brought in as a witness those of you who understand the law of evidence understand the glaring mistake that this one lawyer made around 15 years prior when the matter was being tried the mere contention that because the mother of the complainant who was the actual witness to the demand the the demand of the bribe was not produced and the testimony of the complainant himself that my mother told me counts as hearsay evidence would could have saved this person his job could have saved this person several lakh rupees of back payments after the conclusion of the trial this thing was not brought up before the trial court this thing was not brought up before the high court when the matter reached the supreme court despite our best efforts to focus on this one aspect the judges declined and with good reason if you have not made this submission if you have not made this contention at earlier stages the courts are not inclined to consider this aspect and grant you relief on that what we were able to secure was that the person was left his period of sentence was reduced to that which is already undergone that is the really little relief we were able to get him but we could have got him in, gotten him an acquittal we could have gotten him his complete back wages from prior 15 years if this one contention could have been made anywhere in the written submissions filed by the counsel another example is that in a delhi rent control act eviction matter there was one small contention that on a brief perusal of the file within 20 minutes i saw but because i was not there at the trial court because i was there at the stage of revision i went and i made my claim before the high court judge and i said i am not liable to be evicted just because of this one technical issue the high court judge promptly asked me did you raise this contention in your application for leave to defend i had to say no and that was it the judge threw out my matter there have been several such instances for ex another one is that a client of mine fought a battle won till every court up till the national consumer dispute redressal commission as a complainant and the matter was thrown out only on the one aspect of this person not being a consumer under the consumer protection act because the thing that he had purchased he was using for his own business these are small little things which will which you need to be careful about if you don't it is up to you to decide how much you're going to let it weigh on your conscience 
as a lawyer because your client comes to you with their hopes really high their knowledge extremely low and they depend on you they trust in you do not break that faith put in every bit of effort you can and for god's sake just read a few judgments before you go to a court of law and make your submissions i've just come from a, a district court where a where a counsel for an accused says because the complainant has now died the complaint shall stand abated and nothing can be done the judge literally laughed at his face you do not want to be laughed at in a court of law you do not want your client to come crying and say that he has lost because of you and you should not because trust me i have been there i have made mistakes with because of which my clients have suffered and a lot of those cases have given me so many sleepless nights it is very difficult to live with that just do a little better job do your research a little better just try to kind of keep those things in perspective